Hey Drug Zero OS Reviews, you're watching our video review of the mobile microscope. As with anything in 21st century, we're starting to see kind of a digital revolution with more and more digital devices from smartphones to tablets, and now even in products that are typically non-digital like microscopes. So you can actually use this to really get a close-up zoomed in view of different materials. Uh, if you're in a science classroom, if you're doing a lab, uh, or just for fun, these are all practical uses for this digital mobile microscope. It provides a traditional stand that you can use to adjust and focus just like on a old-fashioned microscope, but it also allows you to take it with you like any camcorder and to take it um, and zoom in onto anything that you want to with the lens. So taking a look at the specifications, there's a three there's a three inch uh, TFT LCD display on the front uh, and you have the ability to capture 12 megapixel uh, images. The five megapixel here is an error. There's also up to 200 times of magnification, 500 times by digital mag mag magnification, so 200 is optical. And there's also photo and video capture on board, a rechargeable lithium iron battery that uses a Nokia inspired battery that we'll see in a moment. There is a micro SD card slot that you can connect, sync, and download via the USB port. And a, the measurement by software, uh, there's a CD-ROM that's included inside. So pretty nice in terms of the packaging and presentation. It retails for about $80 online and it arrived in about three days after I ordered it. Here is the device. Um, you see that this is the traditional stand that I was talking about. This is the battery. Again, kind of Nokia st in style, uh, inspired. There's a AV out cable for you to connect to a television or monitor, a carrying case, a AC adapter, and the software and installation manuals. And that's about it. The back features some more specifications if you are interested in looking at that. Connects via micro USB. So that's for charging and syncing, and charging takes up two hours to fully complete. Taking a look at the contents of the packaging, we have on the inside the CD installation uh, drivers, manuals, the guides, and also a soft cleaning cloth which allows you to clean off any dust on the lens and also on the screen. There's also access to the device itself which we'll see in a moment. We also have access to the aforementioned AV output cable for you to connect to a television screen. And this is the battery. The battery, again, uh, the BL5C, which is actually used in some Nokia phones. Kind of interesting. It's a 1,050 milliamp hour battery, so it should get an okay amount of juice into the device. This is the, sorry, the mini USB cable that's included for charging and syncing purposes with a computer or a Mac. And this is the lanyard that's included. There is a carrying case that's included for you to take your device with you when you're traveling, which is pretty nice. It's a felt carrying case with a adjustable top for you to close it up when you're taking it with you. And there is the AC adapter, which you must use to charge the device. Uh, it's a proprietary charger, it looks like, and not a standard one. And finally, there is the case or the stand, which allows you to have the device mounted well, when you're not using it using your hands. So this is the traditional stand to transform the digital microscope into a more old-fashioned one. Let's just rip this open. And it's made entirely out of metal and chrome, so it's going to be a bit of a fingerprint magnet, I can see, but it has a nice hefty weight and also a rubber stamp on the back, which prevents any sliding around or any scratches on any surfaces. And it has a pivot hinge that you can adjust and navigate, so it allows you to rotate at 360 degrees and also up and down. So a very adjustable and flexible stand is provided. Finally, taking a look at the actual design of the device itself, if we set everything off to the side for a moment. We can see that the actual microscope itself is made out of a soft touch material that's pretty nice and comfortable to use. We insert the battery on the inside and the device will power on when the lid is opened. Taking a look at the other design elements of the actual digital microscope, we can see that it does have a rather large lens protruding on the sides, and that's for getting up close with the subjects. And it's recommended that you don't place anything on the inside of the microscope, but just kind of leave it on the outside without actually having something stick in. But you focus everything by the top, which features a left or right scroll wheel that allows you to scroll between two, uh, 20 times optical zoom all the way up to the aforementioned 250, uh, and allows you to even go higher uh, by magnification using the digital. So there's some digital zoom that magnifies this. And on the sides, you can see there's a ring of uh, LEDs which illuminates darker environments, um, and also it can provide an IR mode, which allows you to see even in the dark. 
And again, on the sides here, you have access to a tripod stand for mounting it and also the mount. There's also the full size of the micro SD card slot for you to swap out media. You do need one to get uh, the device start, uh, started up and to use it. There's an LED indicator on the side. And on the bottom, there's an AV out cable, a mini USB for syncing, and also a charging port, which is proprietary. And, and also a the user interface of the actual microscope itself. We have a simple boot up screen that shows the welcome icon. And you do need a micro, uh, a full SD card inserted before you can actually use it. Battery life is pretty good. It lasted us about uh, two weeks or three weeks before we had to recharge it with daily usage. So it's pretty good as far as battery life is concerned. And the Again, adjustments and ergonomics of the button controls is also pretty nicely spaced. We could have access to all the controls from the zooming to the icons for the selection keys uh, without having to really um, have too much stretching of our fingers, which is good. On the side here, there's a built-in speaker for playing back audio. And of course, we have access to the up-down navigational controls and also a built-in um, microphone on the very top as well. So if we try to zoom into something for demo, we have a pack safe. This is a exo mesh location. Uh, material that's built in here. You can see how the uh, indicators or the LEDs have been illuminated. They also work for darker environments and also for brighter environments. Uh, there's also an IR built in as well, so it will be something that's pretty easy to use, I think. Um, so this is a bit of a dark environment. It's trying to find, I guess, the trying to find where the device is, but again, we can zoom using the top of the scroll wheel here, and you can see how the camera itself will actually move up and down and try to find uh, the actual location. We can try something else. Um, perhaps we'll take a closer look at some printouts. So this is a icon of a Palm device. If we put it here, we can then zoom in and zoom out, and you can see the text can get pretty clear. You can see all the pixels on the screen, including how the actual paper was printed out, which is very impressive, um, and you can get to a pretty far extent. Um, so everything is pretty clear. It's crisp. You can actually record it and take an image of it. The weakest link of this particular device is going to be the video capturing, just because the frame rate isn't that great and it's also not HD quality, and there's a bit more stuttering and a bit more of a slowdown. But as far as image quality is considered, it does work very, very well. I can even zoom in even more. Uh, you can actually get up to two stages of zoom ins uh, sometimes, depending on the subject that you're using. Um, the paper here seems to be only a one-time zoom in. I can also use the digital zoom in to get even closer. If I want to get closer to the subject and see the pores on the paper, I can do that. So quite impressive. Let's try some other materials. Um, so for darker materials, it seems to struggle a bit more, which is a negative aspect, but you can see it still relatively works. It's just a bit more difficult to see what's going on, or at least we have to kind of zoom in even more, at least to see kind of the particles of the device starting to appear. But I guess this is to be expected from a relatively inexpensive microphone, uh, or a relatively inexpensive um, microscope. So again, if you zoom in onto more darker subjects, it's going to be a aspect that's less effective than on lighter subjects in terms of color. So it seems like total black subjects are a bit weaker and will need a bit more work in order to get into focus. If we try something like this, you can see the lighter surfaces are a bit easier to see. I can zoom in and get a bit clearer. I can zoom into the aluminum and see and kind of how that works. I can try my hand. That's going to work pretty well. It's going to show up all the pores of the skin and, you know, what's under the skin as well. So it does a pretty good job as far as focusing is concerned. It's very, very sensitive. It's very easy to use, very easy to set up. And um, overall, it's a generally pleasing experience. It's easy to, I guess, get the device into focus just by kind of playing around with it. Um, so pretty impressive performance in general, I would say. Um, Again, you can get things to be a pretty crisp resolution. You can change it. This is 5 megapixels right now. You can get it even higher if you want to, up to 12 megapixels, which is very impressive. I can take an image of that and then take it out. And after when I'm done, I can simply put it back in, and the device will automatically turn off. So one of the downsides of this particular microscope is that there isn't a built-in lens cover, so you have to make sure nothing gets inside to make the lens get dirty or uh, attract any dust or grit with it. But otherwise, it's really easy to use, it functions very well, the images that can be captured are quite awe-inspiring, and it works equal equally as well, I'd say, with uh, as a traditional microscope would for uh, larger and lighter color subjects. But if you have something like a very dark color, like we tried some leather prints here, it's a bit more difficult to get into focus. Although you can still get into focus. I've gotten this into focus before when I was a bit more patient and uh, was concentrating with it. But if you're trying to record a, you know, 
a video overhead and still trying to get into focus, it becomes a bit more tedious and uh, a bit more difficult to do so. Um, overall, we definitely would recommend this device. It offers a nice design, it's easy to carry around, it's portable, and it's basically the next generation of most microscopes. Uh, and it's great for daily usage, for personal usage, if you liked exploring things, or if you want to use it for light usage in a school, perhaps for chemistry, uh, or for a class, it also works pretty well. You can check out our full written review on our website. Thanks for watching this video review here at OS Reviews. This has been the digital uh, 12 megapixel microscope.